Thank you everyone for tuning into this 30th episode of LinkedIn Live audio event series where we are conversing with thought leaders, founders and CEOs about their journey, how they have unlocked their own true potential and now they are unlocking the true potential of folks around them. Evening, afternoon and morning based on where you are from. This is your host Prashant and before I get any further, I would like to emphasize on the purpose of this event. We aim to unlock the true potential of folks who are in constrained environments, maybe unable to follow their role models, or maybe unable to break through their preoccupied mundane life, or maybe the internet buzzwords are adding friction to harness positive changes. No matter what the reason may be, there is value in staying towards the end of this event. And today's topic and discussion is career transitions 30 60 90 day plan anybody and everybody who has worked or joined an organization they are well known about it and it is not just about getting a new role or designation within an organization or outside no matter how many years of experience you have or how long you have worked new job can often be nerve-wracking today's guest speaker is Shivani a distinguished strategic HR consultant, leadership growth and transition coach brings a unique blend of experience that both from an HR leader point of view and now as a leadership consultant and leadership coach who is coaching folks around the globe with her 18 years of global experience spanning India, Europe, the UK, Singapore, Shivani has developed a keen expertise in various facets of human resources and organizational development. Her specialization includes organizational learning development, talent management, HR policies and processes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the globe, please join me welcoming Shivani. Welcome to the event, Shivani. How are you? What's going on in your world today and where are you? Hi, Prashant. So glad to be there with you on the show. A very warm morning, evening, afternoon to all our audience. I am right now speaking in, from India. I am in Pune city and happy to just connect with all of you. It's a wonderful day. Absolutely. And everyone is so excited and delighted to have you here. Your presence, someone who has worked for decades here in the HR industry, led organizations from the top, knows what's going on at the very top and at the very bottom responsible for performance around the globe, be it any industry. You have a very diverse experience in different, different experiences. Now, I know you have been hiring thousands of people. I know you have been onboarding thousands of people all your life in different organizations. I am curious to know what is your perspective? What are the key things one can keep in mind when they are joining an organization or a new role? 30, 60, 90 day. What's going on with all these things? Over to you, Shivani. Thank you so much, Prashant. Uh, hello, everyone. And uh, I would like to start with saying we all have been into this uh, position where we have either changed the roles or joined new roles. So two things as a disclaimer before we start. One, there are three factors that will vary when it comes to career transitions. One would be your industry. Another would be your size of the organization. And third would be the culture of the company. Folks, we should understand that whatever major things that we talk about it, and I know it is not easy, any transition and any change is difficult, but the environment around us, we need to be more flexible and we need to kind of weave into what will work into our situation. Mm -hmm. So just keep that onto your mind as we speak further today. Okay. And uh, another thing that I would like to quickly put out, uh, I'm seeing there are quite a number of people and I'm very curious to know if it is possible. You can just give a thumbs up. If you all are people managers, give me a thumbs up. All right. There you go. If we you got are thumbs individual up there. contributors, probably you can give me a heart. Okay. We got some hearts there. Wonderful. So yeah, I mean, there are a mix is what I'm, what I feel here. There are people managers. There are some individual contributors. And the reason I asked that question is, when we are at an individual contributor role, we are aspiring, you know, we are aspiring to maybe the next level growth or a next job opportunity. Uh, that is a slight different that we will go about. And those who are already in people managers role right now, for them also transition is different at every stage, whether they are vertically 
uh, growing horizontally growing or moving out of the organization mm -hmm. yeah so just keeping that in perspective uh, we will have at the end of the session whatever i speak about or some you know pre content so feel free to use that later but what we will focus upon is careers it is basically about full time roles we are talking here it is not the transition that we do from career to entrepreneurship or vice versa another point to note mm -hmm. because it's a very vast subject i thought it's good to clarify that how does that sounds to you prashant absolutely it sounds excellent here shivani and you know folks are excited because they have joined here to specifically hear more about things what are the potholes which are very common absolutely absolutely so here it is i will start with a very very small case i would say with due permission of one of my coaches wherein a very a senior professional with quite some experience uh, got into a new role with a lot of excitement you know it, it was a kind of a job that he was looking for a while however 3 or 4 months to the organization Uh, is when i connected with him mm -hmm. and it seems that he was in lot of stress a uh, lot of you know kind of a uh, lack of clarity i would say he was a bit lost and when we had the conversation lot of good things came up he was like shivani i have rich experience i have been always been a good performer things have been always been fine i'm not understanding what am i missing here mm -hmm. and that is what happened folks so whenever we are into this transition mode while we think and we feel that okay we have done this thing for all our life what is a new thing you know if we, if we are getting into a new job but then a lot changes it is like you know kind of settling into a completely new place mm -hmm. kind of a when you kind of relocate and it's an absolute foreign place suppose as an example if may if you may take and how many things that we will have to do right to plan for that entire transition I think something similar of that sort happens in when we are changing our careers or getting into new roles. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that happens, especially for folks who are probably getting into managerial roles for the first time, or getting into another organization where they are also people managers, apart from the technical reality. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that happens is it's about talking about your own self. Mm -hmm. You know, what happens is usually we think. okay we have come to a certain title mm -hmm. and this is my job role is and obviously my seniors would be putting out there this is this is how i will work but the the team members the people around are very very curious mm -hmm. they always have some or the other uh, you know question in mind they have their own ways of evaluating so in that case basically the research also shows because of these perceptions that people hold mm -hmm. it is always good in case if we have the right way to introduce ourselves right questions to ask what are the do's and don'ts that we should and we should not mm -hmm. do and how should we plan our first 30 60 and 90 days in the transition so that people are not sticking not evaluating always or probably they don't have any you know assumption sort of a thing uh that is where it comes so what should a new leader pitch should look like mm -hmm. i think i will start from there and irrespective of you have been some experience but why i am calling it a pitch i am calling it a pitch because this is how today's work market is you know this is how today's uh entire job market is earlier we used to see about the pitch only by the sales folks mm. or people who used to be you know uh, where, where they have to go and talk or entrepreneurs like us who mm. are always ready with the pitch but i think the times has changed careers have become and you are the own ceo of your own careers now wow so you have to even i want even... to pause you there i want to pause yeah. you yeah such a such yeah. a powerful line you know such a powerful thought you are the ceo of your own self that is so true that is so Absolutely. true you know that's i mean we, we are far gone from the time and era where we think that the managers will be doing things and just because we have a big brand name and we are joining fortune 500 or otherwise mm. somebody will take care of us and and it is a lot to do with you know how you put your first introduction the first connection with the people around you mm. with your teams mm -hmm. with your stakeholders and and i will just talk about three key elements you know here which which i think will be really useful for our audience first is basically 
uh, putting in your conversation something about your competence and change. Mm. And and I will give an example, you know, because I think example helps. Mm. What is the competence that you are bringing, and what is this change about? What made you change? What you have changed, and why you are here? Mm-hmm. Second important element that I will focus upon is experience and expectation. What experience I bring in, and what kind of an expectation that I am looking, especially if you are the leader, you know, if you are a, a person who will be managing teams. Mm-hmm. So please understand, folks. We are not talking of wherein some new team member has come to your team right now. Mm-hmm. Right now, we are talking about you as a person. You are taking into and getting and stepping into this new role. Mm-hmm. into a new company or into a new position vertically horizontally any ways you know so that that is the second piece that i will have first is competence and change mm-hmm. another is experience and expectation and the third is what is your overall leadership style mm-hmm. what is your approach and it's your preference and why i say this as a part of the pitch is it helps people to understand you better it gives you an opportunity to straightforwardly upfront put certain things that might be probably on your mind mm. so if you say that i have been working in xyz industry for you know xyz years uh post my whatever if you want to include some credentials there and i would like to prioritize maybe learning about various departments mm. so people get a message okay this is what is going in this person's mind Mm-hmm. what is he up to because when a new person comes into a old place mm-hmm. most of the time what happens is people have those question marks they are still in the thinking mode what will be it like how is the person mm-hmm. will we will we be able to have the same you know repo like we had in the past and all those things and so that that, that is the statement yeah. yeah also just to add there people all want to know that what is in there for them like this in the absolutely way, how absolutely. is he going to engage with us definitely i'm just telling you with my experience but you are the expert but like you know whenever you will see somebody on the even on the news and everywhere or any kind of interview they all are curious about things very 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 valid things jivani yeah 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 so that is where and, and these are very smart ways of putting out you know prashant we don't have to be kind of a you don't have to like learn a pitch or something <laughs> you just have to be smart and conscious enough what are the words you are using what are the things that you are adding into your initial conversation you can always say although we are restructuring the organization or i might have come for this particular role mm. uh, everything will remain the same we will just look for some expertise of a special kind so so that people again do not have those fears or assumptions because sometimes when restructuring is happening or a new person comes at a senior position a lot of people have question marks in their mind and they just think what now you know what is company doing now i don't know what will happen and especially in current uncertain times i think more fear and more anxiety is all around rather than the trust factor that okay maybe we are into a progressive mode mm. so as leaders uh, and especially as new leaders it becomes our responsibility to be more cautious about how we are putting our pitch and how we are actually interacting our initial conversations with our people so that they have some insight this is the competency the person brings in he or she has changed for these reasons and this is how he will contribute uh he has this experience and maybe i can learn x y z things mm. so that why when that response to give is i think extremely extremely important as first important point because that is the first connect that you are having and obviously your leadership style because that helps people to understand okay okay he is he is open to listen mm. or he is open for ideas yeah <laughs> you know those kinds of things yeah i have yeah. a question here you know sometimes yeah. so when you are new in an organization you get mm-hmm. to introduce yourself in many forums your direct yeah. team members people above you and cross functionally yeah. so what are the tips or thought process you have which you would like to share for people that hey this is how i'm going to introduce you introduce myself with my team members and cross functional and other things that's a very good question uh, prashant and uh, i should say i was thinking more from you know a top down as uh-huh. i was speaking but thanks that you brought in that and this is how it happens so when it comes to your team member i think something that i spoke about right mm-hmm. now makes sense uh especially saying that okay you know although maybe i have come for this position and we might have some restructuring or changes but nothing to worry i mean we are the same people and we will just reevaluate or see 
you know, mm. who is apt for this project. Now, the same person when meeting the senior bosses or maybe, you know, yeah. going for the first meeting, mm-hmm. that is where, again, the person might put these one or two things what they are looking to listen. Mm. Please always look for what is the other person's uh, will look from you rather than what you want to showcase. You might be having 10 feathers, does not matter. Mm-hmm. You might be having many accolades in the past, mm-hmm. does not matter. At this place, you are a new person and you still have to make your place and make your space. Mm-hmm. And the best way to do is to understand, to read, to have some research about your stakeholders, about mm-hmm. your seniors, about your cross-functional team, and then help them understand how can I contribute. What will I be able to bring on the table that you are looking for? <clears throat> Does that make sense? Absolutely. This is so crystal clear because you don't know, you know, who all who all are around you. You're just walking in and going to your desk and everybody is watching <laughs> you. Who is this new girl or who is this new guy and why is he here? What makes him be where he or she is. This is very powerful. And thank you so much for double clicking on that one, Shivani. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Because that is that is actually very important. And your actually your words change with all vertically, horizontally, and different stakeholders you are talking. Mm-hmm. The, the conscious point for people to take here is uh, r- rather than putting out your best foot and your best yes out there, always look what will please the other person. Here yeah, also, so I have one question, you know, when you uh, when you spoke about the pleasing thing, you know, yeah. what should be the tonality of introduction or body language, anything you would like to talk about, maybe just a little bit, because, you know, when you are in office physically, you are physically out there. So everything is visible <laughs> and communicating something directly or indirectly. Beautiful. Uh, I think, Prashant, you are bringing some very good questions. And yes, your body language your tone, your confidence, are you having a, you know, and and please understand there's a very thin line difference between sounding that I am overconfident or I'm, you know, too cool about it Mm -hmm. and being subtly about, uh, assertive about what you're good at, being confident about that. And that is where you have to be very cautious about it, especially in case if you're meeting senior folks and things like that. Mm-hmm. Please understand also one important thing that people make a mistake. And I think we will, I, I was about to come on the do's and don'ts later, but uh, sometimes we try to sell ourselves a bit over, you know, we try to prove our point every time that I can do this or I can do this and I'm bringing this to the table. Mm. You don't always have to overdo. So basically one of the do's and don'ts will be don't overshare. Mm. but do relate to the reports or the personal level or you know what what is the repo you have with the personal mm. don't just share your complete bio data complete resume history there please mm-hmm. don't do that create a story out of it be creative curate a story out of it and weave it in such a beautiful way that it sounds like the story yet the message is passed please understand if somebody has selected you with a series of process, they are already sold. That's why you're there. Wow, that is so deep and that is so true. Sometimes we forget that, hey, we are just here. But no, you have been selected. You have been evaluated already by many, many folks around the organization. So that that is very insightful, Shivani. Absolutely. And that is where uh, your body language, your tone... Your confidence is shown because you should not go from the you know from the point of view of oh I'm the new person and I have to fit in no mm-hmm. no it's it's a mutual thing but yes you have to do your part and at the same time you don't have to overdo or oversell yourself yeah mm-hmm. absolutely thank you great great so now now kind of moving further what else what else comes so another thing's very very uh, you know aligned to what we were just talking is about, and this is more specific about people who are moving from individual contributors to the leadership roles. Mm. And and I, I have kind of mixed my conversation between both because I was not sure if we have only one kind of audience. So I think it will be useful to still speak. What happens is when we are at the individual contributor roles, we have very defined tasks. Mm. We have KPIs and you know we have the goals and we actually are told this is what you have to do it. Mm-hmm. But please understand when you are moving into a leadership role, it is about first a shift in your mindset, then in your skill set and tool set. One more time, please, Shivani. You know, I have to (laughs) type it down. I have to record it, what you're saying. Yeah, please tell me. 
so so i what i what i'm saying is the first step that you have to do and is is about your mind before you even take your technicalities what you are good at what are your skill sets and what tools are you bringing please work on your mindset mm. you are not focusing on kpis but now you are focusing on creating an impact mm. kpis are good technical knowledge is must mm-hmm. but when you are leading people when you are working with teams it is about the relationships that you are making with them mm. so it is creating impact and that is a huge shift that i have seen 20 to 40% of new managers fail because they are still the same structured very hard working folks but they are not able to kind of loosen up and and you have to be more into how i am creating an impact what i am doing that people are seeing not only my technicalities but me as a person and that's going to be evident down the road in couple of absolutely. months when absolutely may not be able to connect with them and then absolutely. that transition may not be called as a successful transition i would say right <laughs> absolutely absolutely and and it also depends you know a lot of situations present sometimes we do not know once we enter the organization we get to know how is the team whether it is a very organized team or a dysfunctional team or maybe something already not going well there mm-hmm. and you might get you know a piece of which is not even your created maybe it was somebody in the past who created that and that is okay because as seniors we all get such situations mm. and at that point in time if you are very much into the rules of our own type mm-hmm. then it becomes it it is more about partnering you know here it comes the partnering thing that okay let's together do what we can rather than i tell you and you do it yeah now yeah so that is one of the major shifts into habits and mindsets mm-hmm. another shift is into you know it's not about uh manage your team to leading leaders and building culture because you are actually again a step further moving you are not managing only your team now you are also trying to have cross functional and different stakeholders involved into it mm-hmm. so from managing your team to leading leaders and building culture because the people under you might also be having some team members within them if wow. you are a senior guy yeah you know so it is basically you are not only impacting your level but two level down mm-hmm. into the team so that is where it is more about how you are leading your own leaders mm-hmm. and then creating a culture you are having a overall atmospheric impact in the environment okay and and this is how people make the assumptions and presumptions right mm-hmm. okay he listens or he is open to ideas mm-hmm. or maybe he just give instructions and go or mm-hmm. maybe he just check twice a day mm-hmm. what if in in the you know in between he is not checking it what does that mean does that mean that i have the accountability and i can do what i want mm-hmm. or does uh, and he has the confidence on me what does it mean that probably you know he is the boss and he has given the task and that's it mm-hmm. so those conversations to clear as a leader it is your responsibility that people understand you mm. people understand what is your intention you are from managing your team to leading leaders and building culture you are having impact at every conversation that you are making and you should ensure that they are understanding you right mm. okay so this is another very important a shift in habit and mindset that i see is important when uh, leaders are moving to new roles now uh, from you know being into a sometimes the third thing which happens is being into a known environment you actually are moving into a very ambiguous and and uh, new environment mm. you, know, you have to reestablish your brand and that's the reason i talked about the first point which was so important how you are putting a story uh, outside because you might be a very good leader in your organization but you have a certain culture certain repo mm. certain conversational way there mm-hmm. and you have no idea it might be very different from the other company Mm. and though we do a lot of homework these days there are a lot of ways to have good research but sometimes when the opportunity is in hand it's like you know you do not get everything in the package absolutely <laughs> some things you are aware some things you are not aware of so here and i have a couple of thoughts here but i will let you complete before i ask those questions to just no i think these are the two three things that i wanted to put out there mm-hmm. especially how to let go of your previous role and habits and mindsets and actually move into this new step more from a fresh you know open space mm. you need to be very cautious that it is not about kpis it is about impact it is about leading leaders and making culture and reestablishing your own brand i totally agree to that and chivani before we get any further i would like audience here if they are with us are you listening to us show me some love All right. Absolutely. I would I would I would have loved to hear in but 
this is you know linkedin live so <laughs> if you can show us some thumbs up oh there you go folks are liking it <laughs> and we're going to be starting the q and a so if you have a question in mind uh just stay tuned oh my god so this is so nice this is helpful this helps us to <laughs> wonderful wonderful evaluate thank you shivani so shivani you know we spoke about the 30 60 90 day rule we spoke about how a people manager should be introducing because everybody is curious who is this new person what is there yeah. in for them should they be scared should they be worried or should they be happy and apart yes. from that cross functional teams and how do we communicate upward and also prepare and tell our story what exactly it is and people need to be making sure that they're not repeating their resume everywhere where they're going and then talking about it right because they already been selected Absolutely. about it so in a nutshell that's the summary what i have captured and yes. also working on the mindset when we are leading a team so Absolutely. everything fine and nice but you know what when you are stepping into a new role a new organization you are alone you don't have anybody who can help you yeah. with insights and then what like how do you prepare i mean of course your boss or manager would would let you know but that may not be everything what he or she will let you know so some inputs and thoughts in that direction please absolutely absolutely you have just navigated into the next section that we had and what will i do is i'm not talking of the you know the the pitfalls or the traps that people should avoid because we have covered a lot of them mm-hmm. and and you know they will have the content but i think i will focus on what are the good questions that you should ask when you are taking new role and how can you prepare for that exactly that what you are asking right mm-hmm. now so a couple of questions uh, that comes to my mind which i have while talking to people and especially after orientation when people co- used to come to me you know as an hr person and used to s- find out a bit more about their bosses and department heads you know so this is how we used to have the interaction in- interactions and i used to guide them mm-hmm. uh it is always good to have a candid chat with your senior at least the immediate senior for two reasons mm-hmm. one that is the person who has been into the part of the interview rounds of your selection process so he knows you a bit and and obviously this is what you have to work with so you have already created a connect during the process mm-hmm. now it will be always good to take that connect a step forward and have a candid chat with him or her and ask some questions like uh, who do you think i should meet outside our team mm. who would be useful for me to connect from the you know cross functional teams and other stakeholders maybe mm-hmm. So I think this is a very basic question because you know him, and generally when we go into the organization, you are being met by your own team. People introduce you, or they say, "Come and say hello and welcome you," and all that. <laughs> yeah. So you know you will usually have the common lunch with them. But what about others? Because in big organization, there are a lot of other folks that you have to meet, and it is a good idea rather than doing random and you know finding it for yourself. Just check with your uh, boss and check with your manager. Who do you think I should go and meet outside our team? Mm-hmm. now another thing could be uh, when we are talking with you know because you and your manager are the closest and you are always lying on him or her for support at mm-hmm. least in the initial days so it is also good to ask how do you prefer to communicate mm. what is your true. preference whether it i'm every time should i write a mail mm. is it okay if i walk down to your desk mm-hmm. uh, you know or you know i don't know whether you take uh, breaks and you will be happy to join mm-hmm. what is the nature of the manager what is the nature of his or her communication style mm. so i think this is good to clarify rather than assume or always ask the team members because when you ask the team members slightly it happens like a grape vine you know they tell their own version and and it is like talking about the boss kind of thing happens <laughs> everywhere <laughs> everywhere it happens <laughs> so so why not why not be you know you are adult and they are adults and they understand and just ask mm. just ask so this is another good question the third would be important what's the best way to ask for your input or feedback at some point if i need mm. this again goes with the communication so they, you know there might be communication style but when it comes to their inputs or feedback some managers might be different they are like i am not maybe i i will come back to you after you know some people likes to observe and some are very spontaneous on the spot 
Mm. It depends on the personality of the of the manager of the boss. Sometimes they just say on the spot that this is how it is, and maybe you are not the person who is ready to take that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> so so you try to be kind to yourself also. Sometimes you have to because I have all sorts of managers. They were <laughs> both the kinds. Some who are pro- probably give some periodic time to you, and they will you know be with you and. I give you some feedback and some might be just on the floor will just say something yeah. and go and before we uh, move forward i would just uh, want to let folks know that folks you can raise your hands and i can put you on the microphone while me and shivani converse further about the topic yes okay yes yeah. please do that so yeah i mean these are couple of questions which i think are important to check with your manager mm-hmm. uh, another could be uh, you know what can i do to support the team and how would you like to do it i mean how what, what do you expect from me should i just do these other things that have been told to me or anything else can i do mm. this just shows that you are open and to you know maybe serve them better or how can i help you better which always works mm-hmm. yeah then what would you do if you you know another very important and basic question is to kind of seek their uh, guidance yep. to to turn around the question in such a way what do you think if you would have been in my shoes uh, i should have done the best yep that's yeah? a good one that's so a good one i think these are smart questions and this conversations are very important to set the context rather than having the assumptions presumptions about your manager or you despite that you think i know the person no uh, knowing anybody takes time mm-hmm. you don't get to know in two days yeah yeah so these are couple of questions and and in terms of preparations you know i think one of the important thing is do some deliberate preparation for yourself mm. you know because when it is a new role it is good to have these questions that we spoke about thought through mm-hmm. though we think what a big deal and it is you know we can always be casual and talk about it but no sometimes very small subtle things makes a difference mm-hmm. so it is good to take some time and prepare it is good to you know kind of accelerate your learning in case if there is anything specific required for this new role which was slightly different from my previous role mm-hmm. have i have i researched about it have i read a bit about it mm-hmm. at least do i know the basics before i ask the team and the, my manager mm-hmm. so i think those are the good things to kind of be prepared also kind of tailor your strategy specifically to the situation because as i already said in the starting you know every situation and environment will be different Absolutely. So don't go only the person and the way you have always been. Mm. Tailor out with 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 the requirement of what will fit in right here. Mm-hmm. What can I do in the early stages that could be like one or two early wins mm. of mine? Mm. You know, so that people trust me, manager trust me, and so just imagine you are kind of on the stage and everybody's eyes is on you when you are new. Absolutely, <laughs> whether you like or not, everybody starts evaluating and thinking about you. absolutely and that is where the plan comes align your plan to yourself and to the organization what do you know in 30 days 60 days i will be uh, sharing some template of 30 60 90 days with folks so they can use that if they want but that just help to rechange recap and rediscuss with your manager and you know rather than doing it randomly so that you are very clear and having that partnering conversation that okay we are on the same page another extremely important point and i know i'm running late here prashant but i will add please 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 build the right allies mm. internally externally vertically horizontally everywhere how do we get to know they are the right allies i mean that's the question very very good point prashant <laughs> very good point and this is this is what happens so this is where you need to be smart yeah. and the reason i have said all of the previous things that we spoke about that leads to this mm. when we do our initial interactions how conscious and how observant are you Mm. You don't have to always speak. You don't have to always give your point of view to prove yourself. Hey, I am the new folk and I know everything. No, mm. be the observer. Mm. Be silent. See who is saying what and how is somebody operating. Who is somewhere my values align and some somewhere my values do not align. Mm. It is so so important because relationships are the most and utmost important thing which can make or break your thirty, sixty, ninety days of the start of any new. a uh, job or any new thing that you are taking mm-hmm. yeah absolutely couldn't agree more uh, this was such an insightful framework what you have shared with the folks here and uh, where are you folks are you there listening to us show us some love what's going on in your world have a question raise the hand 
and you get to talk and ask the question. All right. Great. Yes, please. Okay, we're going to give a few seconds here. Some people just take a few seconds longer to raise their hands. Yeah, yeah, sure. And I think, you know, I hope I was not too fast, Prashant. <laughs> we have to cover whatever we have in a... See, time is limited. And the whole intent is to get something valuable to people who are in constrained environments. And that's yeah. the purpose of this event. And we are doing exactly the same. And Shivani, this template of yours, which is there. So how are you going to share to people who are here? So Oh, yes, that is, that is very wonderful that you are. So what will I do is uh, it is either my LinkedIn or your LinkedIn. I will, I will drop an open link, you know, mm -hmm. an open drive link and people can download from there. It will have the everything that I was talking, basically, you know, I have a small presentation deck along with a template of 30, 60, 90 days. There is also some subtle shifts and how you should prepare for your review meetings in case if there are individual contributors there, uh, you know, so some additional resources. Yeah, so I, will, I will drop the link. And having a framework is just having a map from point A yeah. to point B. So 30, yeah. 60, 90 days is something which you have to be very thoughtful you are in a new environment, new territory. There are things which have already been happening in a way. You don't have to repeat them. You have to identify allies, as Shivani was saying, that who match with your value system. And then take it forward to new heights and achieve more success. And Shivani, the other thing is in this template, what you have is that, you know, yeah, okay, fine. So 30, 60, 90 days. So how are they going to use it? So like, I'm going to be joining and now I just open the template and then are there any questions what they're going to look into and then prepare is that kind of thing it is or what is it if you can talk so, about uh, that is a bit broad qu a question Prashant because obviously every situation will be very different what level are you what organization are you you know mm. uh, I cannot specifically answer but what I will say is uh, seven I mean couple of questions that we talked about mm -hmm. do's and don'ts what we talked about see for yourself all of those things and then curate what is important for you so mm -hmm. it can be in terms of certain goals mm -hmm. uh, it can be in terms of certain milestones mm -hmm. you know so you might want to say that okay these are my first 30 days goals that okay I want to be more interactive and understand my stakeholders better you know, and then this, then the other two, three activities that I want to do and how will I use this? And most of the time you need to kind of your, your 30 days should be getting and adding to the uh, 60, 90 day thing. So basically it is adding and helping you in, in the next months mm -hmm. uh, of your progressive cycle, whatever you are doing. And in between all of this, if you have those conversations with your managers and to the stakeholders, it becomes even more better to have that clarity. Mm -hmm. So two things that you get in organization, you know the role for which you are being hired. Mm -hmm. You know the structure of the organization in general. Your, your onboarding process will happen and all those basic details will be given to you. Then third, you will know that this is my manager that I need to closely work with. Yeah. So these are the basic information that you will have. Now, next, what you should do is understand and do a lot of homework for yourself mm -hmm. in terms of organization, culture, their intranet, how does things work here? XYZ. And then couple, you know, combine that with these couple of questions that I talked about. Mm -hmm. And gather this information and then put for yourself what how do I see myself? Uh, technically, in today's time, honestly, there is not much honeymoon period. Mm. Everyone expects results very fast. Mm. And in fact, this is the right opportunity for you to show that I bring something on. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So when you are prepared and gather those information at that point, if you will sit with the template or something, mm. then you will have. So basically you will uh, be able to uh, have, you know, maybe the priorities. Mm. These are my learning goals. These are my performance goals. And these are my personal goals. Because when you are joining a new place, your personal life also slightly gets tight. Mm. You are you are slightly more into a systematic forum. Maybe you had flexible hours in the previous role and now you don't have example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are the couple of things that should come together and it should have slight more detailed plan for you. How do I see, visualize myself in the next 30, 60, 90 days? What are the two, three impacts that I would like to create and want to see me as? And this will only happen when you understand that. Totally agree. And this is yeah. helpful. Thank you. And Shivani, I have a question which I can't hold myself. It's you sure. Know, you know, this is what we spoke about somebody who's getting into a new role and we are preparing them, be it an individual contributor or uh, 
people manager. Now, yeah. what can some of the people managers do when they have new folks coming in? I mean, briefly talk about that so that <laughs> it adds value for the folks who have joined in that, hey, I have a new team member coming in 30, 60, 90 days. I'm not sure if he has heard to this conversation, so he doesn't know how to prepare, right? So he may be just coming in, going out or whatever. So what do you suggest to the people managers who are part of this conversation? You actually pulled out the thing that I, you know, initially said that it is not part of it. Yeah. But uh, the, the, the shortest and the most beautiful answer would be, be a good boss. <laughs> <laughs> Support, support the newcomer. Yeah. In case if the newcomer is lost and if they or she are not prepared, be that person, be that guide to help them understand how to curate 3069 days because now you know it. Yep. And I believe that <laughs> HR and human resource individuals or HRBP who is a, or assigned to that business unit, they're also yeah. thoughtful these days. I have seen that in some organizations, they partner with you, have one-on-ones weekly and then work with you yes. to figure out and navigate yes. through this whole 30, 60, yes. 90 days. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yes, there are a lot of, you know, so, and, and one of the important point here uh, is also, Prashant, there are support and there are things. Mm -hmm. But how clear are you to ask the right questions and use them? Mm. My challenge with a lot of folks used to be, they used to be silent and then things will come onto their plate and they will ask. Sometimes that is too late. You have to be a bit proactive, you know, in the process. Mm. So my, my, that is where all this entire conversation that we have, why do we need to prepare? We are a couple of already into the industry and we have been working. Why do we need to do all of this? Yep. I think one of the reasons we all of have to do it, it is like, as I said, either you are relocating to a new place or you are getting into a new relation. Yep. <laughs> you have to do all those things again, right? Absolutely. Despite that you might have done again in the past. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> This is so, so true. on a lighter note, this is how it is. And that is where you need to be yourself, help manage yourself first. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you are confident, you are calm, your clarity is there. You have the right questions to ask. Are you taking the right time to ask those things and clarify in the manner, in the way mm -hmm. that the other person is comfortable to mm -hmm. tell you? Well, don't make assumptions, presumptions, and don't go with just because I was superhero last time. That's why I will be superhero now also. <laughs> Absolutely. And we got a question here from Raymond Michael. Raymond Michael, you got like 20 seconds, sir. Let us know where you're from. What's your question and what's going on? Okay. Um, I'm Raymond Michael. I'm from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask, getting into a new role in a new organization, is it proper to ask from the boss or team leader or probably your subordinate the shortcomings and probably the, the strength of the previous person in the office, like the person holding the role before you came in, is it is it right to ask from the from the boss, the manager, of the strength and and weakness? I don't know if that's right, quite direct, but I'm thinking of how you can best correct if they were abnormalities, on how best you can act to also meet up with him, standard and stuff like that. That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure, Raymond. Thank you for that question. And that is a very thoughtful question, by the way. You are really going into the subject. And this is how I will respond to you. While the question is good, but I will make a caution here. Please be cautious about how you do it. Mm -hmm. So one, it is not about subordinates. One, your guide, your mentor, your, your partner here is your boss because, you know, he is the person who should know. Second, rather than asking the shortcomings or the strength, uh, the question that even I said before, I guess, you can always say, how can I contribute apart from the role that has been given to me, apart from the day-to-day -day work that has been given to me? What do you think will add value? What do you think are one or two things that I should avoid doing? Mm. So rather than keeping the name of the last person, it feels like, you know, you are trying to uh, look for somebody out there or, you know, the others might talk about it. Why don't we create a question like this that I am here to learn, mm. put that other person on the pedestal. I am here to contribute. And how can I do that better? What will support me do that? And what are things one or two, you know, we all are humans. What is something that I should avoid doing, which might not be appreciated here? Yeah. Does that answer your question, Rim? Yes, very, very well. Thank you. I, I was actually thinking 
um, thinking in that direction because at first I felt it to be like intruding into one's private life. Yes. So I, I'm, I'm very pleased with your answer. I think it has guided me right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raymond. Anyone else? Raise your hand and you get the microphone to ask the question. And we will be wrapping up in just another two minutes. So if you have anything, let us know. And Shivani, I just wanted to just summarize the whole thing here and the last part especially. So be observant because you are at a new place and you have to keep doing it wherever you go and ask the question, <laughs> partner up with your boss because he or she got you in this organization. This is very powerful. And uh, with that said, I think we are on our next milestone of closing notes. What are your closing notes, Shivani? So my closing notes would be, you know, please do these two, three things for yourself. And I think I have written it also. If I have not, I will just speak out. Uh, first, work on yourself. You know, always try and see and have that seek that clarity when i say seek that clarity either by yourself or take somebody's support uh, whether a guide a mentor or a coach whosoever you want to and set your intentions very clear what i am trying to achieve am i doing the job only because i have got a good paycheck and good title or there is something in my heart there and what is in it for me do the same clarity for your personal life please understand work and life are integrated it does not go separate and how you are as a person is you are the way you behave everywhere else. So do that clarity work for yourself. Have that right conversation with the right people. Spend time, maybe 30 minutes slots and do it professionally. When you are going at a new place, you can always block calendars. Is it okay if I block calendars or have your meeting for 30 minutes with you just to try to know you like we do knowing new people? And then align your priorities and learning to the performance. When I say performance, what is expected by you. Mm -hmm. So always align. This is who I am. This is what my priority career goals are. Is it aligning to what my organization's career goals, uh, organization goals are or what is expected from me? If there is a slight disalignment, you see, you no, know, this is, uh, have that conversation and maybe in the initial days, you might have to do some things which might not be directly of your interest. It's okay. But then how are you keeping that in mind and redirecting, maneuvering your plan with your bosses so that you are in the right place? Set timelines. Another extremely important thing, set timelines to execute your accelerator plan. Don't just talk about it and it's happened. And last but not the least, have periodic reviews. Mm. Check for yourself, maybe weekly, have a check-in time, have a reflection time for yourself. How did my week went? How did my bye week went? Two weeks if you want to do in 15 days. What was good? What was not so good? What can I do differently? And this will help you curate the right questions. This will help you ask the right questions in a manner that will be helpful to you and to the other person. So I think that is what I would I would like to you know leave you all with. Absolutely, Shivani. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the globe, you interacted with Shivani, your HR consultant, leadership coach, helping hundreds and thousands of folks around the globe. You can connect with her right now. Get on to that LinkedIn handle and send requests to connect with her. If you have a question, you know where to route it. And remember, the purpose of this event is to unlock the true potential of folks who are in constrained environments. So the more you share, the more you share these learnings with your own team members and anybody around you, you are helping in my purpose to make this place a better place. Thank you, Shivani, for your time. It's been great. And Thank the you so much. attachment, the link, yes, share it with people. Put it in yes. somewhere so, in the uh, comments Kishant, or somewhere. I, think I should go to your post. I will go to the same post that you had put in out. Yeah. You know. Guys, you got and the link there. So feel free. And Shivani, yes. In the comment section, folks, I will put a you know drive link and you can pick uh, whatever we spoke and these slides from there. Excellent. So, time to say adios. And you all have a great evening. Thank you once again, Shivani. Thank you so much, Prashant. It was so wonderful to be with everybody else. Yeah, and feel free to connect. And, you know, you can always send me a DM in case if you have further questions or anything around.